I can't tell if Cricket has rotten luck or is just the stupidest person ever. Hey guys, it's Phoebe with Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst things to happen to Cricket on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Time to pay the piper, who's got the money? Yes, oh, sir. Uh, Frank! Lemons. What? No. No, no, okay, no, you're not paying me lemons again. We're taking a look at the worst things that have happened to Matthew Rickety Cricket Mara throughout the duration of the series. Let's get to it. Number 10, dog altercation. You wanna watch a dog get put down? Yeah, we wanna see how it feels. Great, I got just the one. It seems like the entire universe is out to get Cricket. Usually his torment comes at the hands of the gang, but in this case, it came from a chocolate lab. After coming across Cricket working at the dog pound, Mac and Charlie see that he now has a massive scratch going down his face and over his ruined eyeball. Oh! Uh, oh Jesus oh. Christ, that's gruesome. Yeah, I got into a, a skirmish with a stray chocolate lab. I won't go into details, but uh, suffice to say, that dog is very paralyzed now. He explains that he got into a fight with a chocolate lab, and while he insinuates that he won, it looks as if the dog managed to get in a few good scratches, literally. Honestly, we don't know how this man remains so chipper. Or is it the drugs? Anyway, they got me doing this uh, this community service thing. Yeah, I, but I'm kind of a dog executioner, so uh, looks like old Cricket got the last laugh. Number nine, ringworm. Oh, Rickety Cricket, everybody! Look at this! Rickety Cricket, Rickety Cricket, Rickety Cricket. And just when we thought Cricket's luck had turned around. In season seven's The High School Reunion, Cricket shows up looking rather respectable, complete with his priest's outfit, clear skin, and nicely combed hair. Well, actually, it's uh, it's Father Mara again. Oh, uh, is it? I cleaned up, yes, and uh, oh. I was welcomed back into the cloth. Uh, God had a plan for oh. me, took me into a deep valley, but now I'm soaring on eagle's yeah. wings. However, fellow graduate Adriano Calvanisi later rips his shirt off, revealing that Cricket has not only been robbing people at the reunion, but that he's also suffering from a case of ringworm. It's pretty disgusting, and everyone in attendance is understandably grossed out. We're covered in ringworm! It's her fault! She told me she loved me! We were supposed to be together forever! Cricket is then dragged out to the parking lot by the cool kids, effectively ending what seemed to be a promising comeback. But as we've learned, there are no comebacks on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. You two probably have ringworm together, don't you? No! no, 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 no stay away from me! To think I was gonna let you jack me off. Wait, wait, you were? <laughs> Number eight, homelessness. Rickety Cricket! That's Rickety Cricket! Rickety! Rickety Cricket! Rickety Cricket! Here we return to the early days of Cricket's misfortune. While trying to get rid of the Mafia's cocaine, Dee and Charlie come across Cricket, who reveals that he's now homeless after leaving the priesthood for Dee. Okay, ever since you convinced me to abandon the church, my life has been in a bit of a tailspin. Who, me or Charlie? You, D. He collects chains from passersby, is forced to defend himself from violent drug addicts, and is called a street urchin by Charlie and D. It's no surprise that Cricket calls it one of the darkest times of his life, but if he knew what the future had in store for him, he'd be savoring this moment. Actually, it's the opposite of great, Charlie. It's, um, one of the darkest times of my life. Is it? That makes Is sense. It? Yes. Sure, being homeless and getting attacked by drug dealers certainly sucks, but that's nothing compared to the numerous tragedies that would later befall him. Well, but the good thing is that you must know a lot of drug addicts. Oh. Well, yes, I was actually attacked by a couple last night. Almost Wait, got stabbed. Oh, did you? Really? That's did you great. really? Number seven, having his kidney taken. I'm gonna bring my guest in. Guest? I asked Cricket to come. What? Cricket, he's Cricket, outside. No, Frank, you can't just bring guests in here. This is our podcast. I feel like you're trying to take over. When Dennis and Dee decide to start a podcast, Frank brings in Cricket as a guest, promising him chicken if he appears on the show. Cricket! Chris. Yo. There he is. Come on in, buddy. We're ready for you. Hey, Frank, where's my chicken? This is taking forever. Come on. I promised him a rotisserie chicken. Let's go, chop chop, I'm starving here. Of course, he doesn't actually have a chicken and ends up giving Cricket some lemons to suck on instead. All right, wait a minute, here. I do have something for you. Lemons. Lemons? Yeah, you suck on them. Oh, come all on, right. this can at least give me the crackers. No, suck on a lemon, here, go ahead. Well, they are good for scurvy. Strike one against poor Cricket. We then find out that Cricket no longer believes in God because someone stole his kidney. I don't know, I'm not gonna sit here and, and try to get inside the mind of a dog. I mean, that's God's work. Well, not that I believe in God. I don't. Not since that Chinaman stole my kidney. It's a story just begging to be told and explored, but unfortunately, we learn nothing about that fateful day. What we do know is that Cricket is now minus a kidney, and that's just one more thing to throw onto the pile of tragedies that is Cricket's life. This is, us. This is not good radio!
video. Number six, Hallucinating Bell. Excuse me. Excuse me, are you, um... Yeah, 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 I'm the suck boy you're looking for. You want my time, you gotta pay to spray. That's my motto. That, and you cannot finish inside me. No, 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 Matt, it's me. Dad? Most of the things that befall Cricket are darkly hilarious, but this is just sad. In season 12's A Cricket's Tale, Cricket is approached by his elderly father, who requests that he return home to the family business alongside his brother. Want me to come work for you? Well, I want you to learn the business. I'm not getting any younger. It's time for me to pass the torch. Throughout the episode, Cricket falls in love with Belle, successfully keeps an important customer, through threats of incredible violence, mind you, and earns the respect of both his father and confrontational brother. However, we later learn that Belle is actually a dog and that Cricket has been hallucinating on PCP throughout the episode. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, what are you doing? What the hell are you doing? I'm making out with the woman I love. What the hell are you talking about? It's Dad's dog. You're making out with my dog. Dog? <laughs> Oh, shit! He later returns to the gang and smokes more PCP, effectively ending his life as Matthew Mara and embracing his identity as Rickety Cricket. Hey, you guys mind if I go in the bathroom and smoke some PCP? Oh, yeah, absolutely! What you, do you do, Cricket? You do you! You do you! We don't judge, Cricket! We don't judge! <laughs> Number five, Broken Legs. Oh, you guys! Cricket! Cricket. Hey, there you are! What are you doing? I'm working on my moves. What moves? For my musical! I'm writing a musical, you guys! It's about life on the streets. Archangel has to live on the streets and fight crime. Remember how we said that being homeless was nothing compared to the tragedies that would befall Cricket? Yeah, those tragedies happened, like, right away. Once Charlie and Dee employ Cricket as their cocaine dealer, he instead samples the drugs and becomes addicted to nose candy. You sold our drug money on two garbage cans? No, 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 no. I did some too. Yeah, we can see yeah. that, Cricket! Is yeah, there any laugh? Is there can any we laugh? Yes, left? there is some laugh! He even blows the money he earned from dealing on a pair of ratty trash cans, which he uses to write a musical with intense coke-fueled energy. When the gang uses him as a scapegoat against the mob, however, things go from bad to worse. Both of Cricket's legs are broken in an act of retribution for something Cricket didn't even do. It's so sexy, you guys. That's the thing. It's all hips and nips. Oh, Ross, I'm gonna get higher and higher. Hey, do you guys have more blow? Yes. Get him out of here. Weirdly enough, he doesn't seem to mind that much because, hey, he loves cocaine now. I broke my legs, but they did break my spirit. But I don't feel the pain, but I found more pain the pain. Number four, hand wound. While seeking shelter in the bar's basement, Cricket is accidentally shot in the hand by an on-edge Frank, who thought Cricket was a looter. Fire, looter! Fire, shoot him! No, don't shoot him! Despite the wound, Cricket refuses to be driven to the hospital, as they supposedly euthanize the homeless. We gotta get him to the hospital! No! I ain't going to no hospital! They euthanize the homeless! They're goddamn death camps! You got no hand, Cricket! Oh, I have a hand, Frank! It's, it's a little side, I have a hole in it, big deal! And really, that's about all we need to hear for our hearts to break for this poor man. He so often goes through a lot of torture, and being shot and refusing to go to the hospital out of fear is a great example of his physical and mental anguish. Frank, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't really want to go to the hospital either, you know, because we're gonna be there when the hurricane hits and it's gonna be packed to the gills with vagrants. Are you out of your mind? This what? man is bleeding to death okay. here! The gang treats Cricket like absolute garbage, but in their defense, this was an accident. We could dress him up and take him upstairs, and then the looters would think he's the owner of the bar, and they'd have their way with him, and if he died, you know, it's on them and, and not on us. That, that's good. Let's just Don't do that. Don't listen to him. He's delirious. Number three, trash can follies. So, what do we do? What do we? I think it's starting. Yeah. All right. Go, go ahead. Go. go jump go. in the yeah. ring and okay. yeah. fight cricket. Yeah. Being shot in the hand is bad, but it's nothing compared to this debilitating trash can injury. Oh, come on, ref. Is that even legal? I didn't see nothing. Dude, cricket's gone crazy, man. We can't let the Talibum win. Right, all right. While wrestling as the Talibum, Cricket gets a metal trash can to the head courtesy of Frank, resulting in the lip of the can slitting his throat. America sucks! Terrorist rule! Yeah! Oh, you got me! A trash man! 
Having your throat slit and bleeding out in front of a rowdy crowd is bad enough, but this injury comes with a bunch of other side effects. The most obvious is that Cricket's voice is permanently altered, resulting in that signature gravelly quality that he exhibits throughout the rest of the show. What's going on with your voice? It's from when Frank hit me with the trash can. Wound got infected, yeah. it was a whole ordeal. Oh, and dogs also try to mate with the resulting neck wound, so that's something he also has to contend with. Yep, his life is pretty horrifying. Well, uh, the other morning, I wake up, I find a dog sniffing at my wound. Mm. He's fully aroused, mind you. So I'm thinking, oh great, you know, what does this jerk want? Of course I know what he wants. Number two, being hunted down by Mac and Dennis. You know, a really great hunter would go after something that could hunt him back. Oh. Like a man. Oh, hell yeah, dude. A man? Don't even joke about hunting no man. Who's joking? I'm not joking. You know your life has reached a low point when you're literally hunted for sport. In the episode Mac and Dennis Manhunters, the duo decides to hunt Cricket for fun. We're gonna hunt Cricket! I thought we went over this already! You do not hunt a man! Oh, come on, man, don't bring me down, not right now. Not while my nips are like this. To do so, they lure him to the bar with promises of D, only to tell him that they'll be hunting him throughout the streets of Philadelphia. Well, relax, Organs. relax, take it easy. You don't want to be all nervous and sweaty when D gets here. So she's coming? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, for a second there, I thought you guys were going to do something terrible to me. Yeah, we are. She's not coming. <laughs> no, we're going to hunt you. They proceed to do just that, only Cricket manages to get away from them due to his surprising athleticism. Seriously, he's like freaky athletic. Okay, how did his legs just do that? I'm not doing that, no, Dennis. No, that was incredibly Let's dangerous. Go polish off that case. Did not know he was capable of that. In the end, he's left alone with Mac and Dennis, and they proceed to, well, we won't go into detail, but suffice it to say that it's not pleasant for poor old Cricket. But then again, nothing in his life seems to be. It's just you and us and a couple pairs of sour, sweaty balls. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Thanksgiving Dinner Hey, turkeys! Gobble, gobble! Cricket, what the hell are you doing here? Word around town is you guys are squashing beef. We don't have beef with you. You don't have beef with me? I was a priest before I got involved with you guys. Just when you thought Cricket couldn't possibly sink any lower, Dennis goes and locks him up in his burning apartment. Cricket shows up after learning that the gang was squashing their beefs, which was a huge mistake on his part. Great! <laughs> Look at that, beef squashed, huh? Beef squashed. Okay, wait, 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 hold on a second. Here, sign this treaty, mm, and yeah. it'll be official. Good. Boom, all right, get out of here, go, go, go. Yeah, yeah. Not only is the gang completely unremorseful, but Cricket is forced to eat scraps, and is asked for his eyeball, has a hatchet thrown into his arm, and is horrifically burned in the apartment fire. So we're just gonna lock them in there? They're definitely gonna burn to death. Okay, guys, nobody's gonna burn, all right? There's a fire escape, we'll call 911. We just need to buy a little time so we can get the hell out of here. When we later see Cricket, he looks like Two-Face, half of his face having been disfigured in the fire. And to make matters just a little bit worse, the gang has absolutely no memory of him even being at the dinner in the first place. Put what it back happened? on! Put it on! Put it back on! Put it on! What the hell happened to your face? You wanna know what happened? Yeah. This happened to me when I was locked in your burning apartment at Thanksgiving. No, you weren't. I don't about. think you were there, man. Yeah, no. The gang squashes their beefs is my personal favorite episode of It's Always Sunny. Sorry, Cricket. But what did you guys think? Let us know in the comments or tweet me at Phoebe underscore WM. And don't forget to check out this video.